what is going on guys today we are going to be going over these my rod tip ups and how i make them i like these things a lot they um they've i've not had any issues with them they're very durable and good thing about them is they break down really really easily flag pops out rod holder comes out and i can stack a few of these in a bin and they do not take up a lot of room at all so let's just get right into it and start building these things as you can see here we have our old two um tip ups the ones i've been using over here and we have all the materials we need to make the new ones so i bought all of this stuff at menards but you can get this at pretty much any hardware store lowe's uh, home depot whatever doesn't matter where you get it from um, i'm going to throw up an uh, materials list over here uh, with prices and the quantity that these things came in at the store because different things come in different quantities so when you do this I recommend that you were you would make two rather than one because the difference between buying the materials to make one and to make two is like a dollar fifty so it's just better to make two um, the only thing that is not on that list um, as far as me buying it are these pegs these are just metal pegs that you use to put the spring on for the flag I just had these laying around so I use them but you could use almost anything for this if you go to Menards and or Lowe's or wherever and you find the section that has all these different little odds and ends and the little plastic plastic pull-out drawers I'm sure you could find something similar to this that would work um, as well as you could take actually a bolt if you wanted to and cut the bolt and use that as the peg or just get a short bolt and put it up to the board to use for that I already have this one pretty much drilled out um, these are also this board was one that I had laying around but on the price list I put it on there um, it's just a one by four I think it's two bucks for a three foot section which will make you two of these really easily first is the hole for the PVC rod holder so what I did was I marked a section little mark here and then I took a regular drill bit, kind of started it straight on, and then turned it to an angle and drilled a 45 degree angle through there as a tap hole. Then I took a hole saw that would uh, fit the PVC I had, which I believe was a one and a quarter inch hole saw, and I took that, put that in. There's a, as you can see, there's a tap screw before the hole, this whole part of the saw, and I put that in at the same 45 degree angle drilled that through at a certain point I couldn't drill any further because the wood was hitting up inside the hole saw so I had to flip the board over and go the opposite way from the other side and as you can see that kind of popped out if you didn't have a hole saw you didn't want to go buy one as long as you have the PVC and the PVC cut you could put it right on the board and just screw it screw it right on there if you wanted to you don't have to have a hole that it sits in I just have a hole because it sits in there and I can pop it in and out for storage the next part really simple was the hole for the peg take a drill bit whatever size you need for your peg drill it right through same thing for the eye screws just drill holes right through there as taps for your eye screws to screw into to determine where the screw eye holes need to go just put your bolt right on the end of the board make a mark just inside the bolt head and then about three quarters of an inch from the other end then moving on to the pvc this is one and a quarter inch pvc which will accommodate pretty much every single size rod you would ever have three foot section of this was like 250 270 something like that and you can make four rod holders easy with that you might even be able to sneak five out of it but anyways what i did was cut these into 10 inch sections with a chop saw then i took the chop saw set it to a 45 degree angle and cut that 10 inch section right in half and that leaves you with these perfect 45 degree angle small little rod holder to sit right in your board it's 
perfect. Okay, now down to the trigger system. These are just three inch stainless steel bolts. I believe these are three eighth inch um, thick ones. You want to make sure you get a thick enough one to drill in a hole through for an alligator clip to fit into. If you get too skinny of one and you can't drill into it, it's not gonna work. But you could do different sizes than this 3 8 inch size that I use. You could go bigger or even slightly smaller. As you can see here, I have the completed one. There's a hole through the center of it and it is ground down. So simply to do this, I just put it in a vise. I started a hole with a smaller drill bit kind of against the side of the vise so the drill bit didn't walk at all. That really just started the hole. Then I turned the bolt so it was straight up and down. Put the larger drill bit in that I needed. What I used was a 5 30 seconds bit. And I drilled straight down through that. And then after that, what happens is around where you drilled that hole, you're going to get metal burrs in the threads. So what I did was put a nut in the vise and I just took a socket and drilled the bolt down back and forth through that nut where those burrs were and that kind of knocked them off and smoothed them out because you will need to put a nut over through that hole again so I just did that to make it easier then for the ground down part what I did was take a grinding wheel and basically just ground down the edge into a kind of about a 45 degree angle and rounded it a bit as you can see you want to make sure you do it on the correct side so wherever the hole one of the holes is sticking out that is the side you want the ground down part to be now i realize a lot of people won't have a grinding wheel to grind down this bolt but what you could do in that case would be get the same bolt but get a nylon one or a plastic one if you can find it and then to do this ground down part you can just use sandpaper and rub it against sandpaper or a palm sander, whatever you have. All right, now we can start kind of assembling this thing. So first things first, take your screw eyes and start screwing them into your holes. Okay, that's looking pretty dang good, exactly how we want them. Lined up perfect. So all we're gonna do is now we need our rubber washers. We're gonna stick this through and feed this rubber washer on. We're going to get that fed on about halfway and then we're going to pop on one of our stainless steel nuts. Now you put your second one on. Once the second one's on, you put your other rubber washer on. And then you just feed it right through the other one. And we tighten our nuts pretty much right up to the eye screws now all right we get them both screwed on there and as you can see we're pretty close to done there that, that looks pretty good next we're going to do the alligator clips now the problem with these alligator clips is at this end sticking out is a bit too big usually to fit through the hole in our bolt down there so all I do is I take a pliers and I kind of slowly bend down this part to the inside and I'm kind of just slowly going along with the pliers bending it down getting it to kind of bend down over itself and then you're just gonna take the other side and kind of do the same thing you can kind of put it over and twist it a bit just be careful not to bend the crap out of this thing and jack it all up and then once you're done with that as you can see it is what I hope you can see it is quite a bit smaller than the original hole was or the original piece sticking out all right let's see perfect you can see that stuck through and came out the bottom of the bolt quite a bit that's the what you want you want it coming out that bottom as much as possible make sure that you have your your slot ground down piece correct in the correct position you want it so when the thing is down it's facing out the back the next part for this is what i do is i'll just take it and i'll take a pliers and i'll grab that rounded end and i'll just pinch the heck out of it 
and flatten it down a lot. And then as you can see, it is pretty much completely flat. And when it's like that, it will keep it from rotating. This alligator clip is pretty secure on there. Um, and that's perfect. So trigger system for the most part done. The other part is you don't want to be putting your your line directly in this alligator clip. It's not going to pop out easily at all. So what I do is take airline tubing and cut little pieces, half inch pieces or so, and just slip them right on over the teeth of the alligator clip. All right, so now those rubber pieces are on or that airline tubing is on. Looks pretty good as you can see. If you don't have airline tubing laying around, you'll have to go get some. It's pretty cheap at Walmart. Um, but what I do is I just, I have so much airline tubing running or laying around, I'll just cut little pieces off um, whatever airline stuff I have laying around. So that's what I do for that. Okay, let's get to the flag now. So first we just pop in our our uh, post for the flag and obviously when you do this if you don't have these posts like this and you have to go buy something this is the first thing you need to get you need to get the post first and then once you find the right post you're going to use then you can go searching for a spring this is called a compression spring you can use an extension spring whatever you can find and just make sure it will fit on the post you're using good like this one does and then on the other side, you're gonna need something to put in this end so that you can put your flag pole down through. So I just have these rubber stoppers. They were in the little pull out plastic drawer part with all the odds and ends at Menards. You could use these or there's probably some other things you could think of or find to put in there. But you know, I just took it, put it in a vise, drilled out a hole through it. And I used an eighth inch hole in this for this one because what we got here is our flag pole, which is just welding steel round. This is an eighth inch one. That's the smallest diameter they had. This is a three foot section, smallest section they had. I think this was like two bucks or something like that. Our hole drilled out through there. We're just gonna stick this on down through there. Sticks on in there, perfect. Then we can put this down. And then we'll just mark with a marker kind of how long it needs to be. About there it looks pretty much perfect. And we'll just take it and take, I think it's going to be tough, but pliers or something and just cut it if we can. There we go. All right, for the actual flag, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just, I'm just going to put some of this Gorilla Tape on. You get fancy with different colored duct tapes or whatever honestly i don't think it really matters because if it's a black flag if it's a green flag gray flag it doesn't matter i'm gonna see it it's not like it's two miles away from me real simple flag stick that on there boom works now that it's all done let's do a quick demonstration for you first of all the trigger system you want very easily rotating but not so easily that your minnow is constantly setting it off so to adjust it you just adjust the nuts on the side here now we just put our bait on drop it down the hole your hole is going to be around here somewhere put your flasher down find how far you need your bait set to then we're going to take the line and we are going to barely clip it just barely in here we don't want it in here too tight but also we don't want it in there too loose. So you kind of have to play around and figure out for yourself how that works best. Then we're gonna put our flag down. I tend to barely clip it on there and these threads hold it on there really well. Now it's all set. We go do whatever and a fish comes, hits the thing, starts pulling it, trigger is rotating, flag goes and this is in too tight as you can see, but eventually it will pop it out and now it's free spooling so obviously you play around with that and you figure out okay that's that's too tight so next time i'll set it looser as you guys can see these things are really easy to make they're cheap and 
they work really well I've, I've had a lot of success with these things and I'm actually gonna go out this week and be using these for some walleye so my next upcoming videos I'll be using these exact ones that I just made and I'm gonna try and get some live action shots of these things getting taken with a fish and getting set off so if you want to see that look out for my next couple of videos other thing with these things is since I'm using mono line, which I recommend, and since there's no trigger system on the actual line, like with the iFish Pros, while the iFish Pros are a great product, these have the advantage when you have freezing conditions where your ice is, where your hole is constantly freezing over, because fish will still be able to grab the bait, set it off, and pull this mono through your frozen over hole very easily. I've got plenty of fish. That I go up and the line is peeling out and I have to stomp that ice out before I can get the fish off. But that's going to do it. I hope that helped you guys out. I hope you can make some of these for yourselves. If you liked it, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Otherwise, do whatever the heck you want. I'll see you guys in the next one.